Good morning and welcome back everybody. So now that I've got the, the Woodland Workshop platform completed, I've got the tarp on order. Now it's time to go harvest some wood and build the, the frame of the structure itself. And all around me here, right where I'm standing, I've got a ton of options for wood to use. So the kind of trees I'm going to need are going to be relatively thin so that I don't have to go and try to split them or cut them into logs or lumber. Uh, they're going to be living still so that they're flexible. They're going to be worked green. I need them long, at least I'd say 15, 14 to 15 feet. And I'd rather they be hardwood so I don't really want to use like these right here or a bunch of pines. I don't, I don't want to use those, no. However, if we look around, we do see that I have a ton of options. Over here, uh, I can't, don't know if you'll be able to see that on the camera. We have quite a few beech trees. And if we can gently, slowly, I'm working on my camera skills, I'm doing this freehand, so please excuse any, uh, any disturbances that you see on the screen. Um, these right here are uh, just a whole bunch of birches back there. They are a beautiful tree, and you can use them for firewood, although if you leave the bark on, it will get rather punky uh, rather quickly. So you do want to keep that covered and not just out in the elements. Oh, what else do we have? Let's see, moving uh, right here, and then over here we have several maples. And in fact, this one is just about perfect. You can see that's a, a relatively young, long, uh, fairly straight tree. And it's right next to, in fact, a, I want to say a couple of trees. This is actually one, two, three branches or trunks, if you will, of the same tree. And if you remember one of my earlier videos, I was talking about coppicing and pollarding. Well, I don't know that it was done intentionally, but this right here is an example of uh, a compass. This tree was growing and something came down and, and cut it right at the base. And now, where one trunk was growing, we now have three. I can take two of these, still leave the third trunk, and not only will I have left a tree, but we'll get more trees, or more of the same tree, growing right there out of the stumps that are left. Which is just really cool. And this, being able to use wood in this state, uh, not having to run it through any kind of specialized equipment, and, and being able to grow it relatively quickly, not have to wait for a tree you know, to get to be a, a more sizable diameter per se, but being able to take it while it's still a a uh, fairly young tree, that's a huge benefit. And it makes producing uh, a timber, a timber yield, a usable uh, timber yield, uh, quite a lot quicker. Tool of choice for this operation is going to be the uh, reciprocating saw. I almost, almost said sawzall, which if you go to any job site, you will hear this called a sawzall. Technically, that's a, what is it, a trademark owned by the Milwaukee Tool Company, or whatever their name is. It, okay, everybody calls it a Sawzall, but if you want to look it up, it's Reciprocating Saw, because I don't even want to get into that. Anyway, um, the real cool thing here is this right here is called a pruning blade. If you look at it, it's got teeth a lot like you would expect to see just on a regular hand saw, but it's on this bad boy makes this a lot quicker. One of the great things about doing it this way is that you don't need a chainsaw. You don't need you know, much of it. And not that I'm against chainsaws. I have one. I actually have a couple of them. Um, one I got to fix, and I'll do a video on that. But uh, 
this guy right here on just electric power that's all you really need and uh, you don't need any of the safety gear that you'd have to have with a chainsaw you don't have any of the concerns and even the noise that you'd have with a chainsaw so working with stuff this small has a lot of real advantages to it Of course, another great thing about using wood this size is that I don't need heavy equipment to move it. I don't need any equipment to move it. But even a big guy like me, I'm not going to be taking a, something I'm going to turn into boards and just heave it on my shoulder like this. But these, I could take several of these, no problem. Well, now, would you look at that? I did not get as many supports cut as I initially thought I needed because partway through I realized that, hey, if you look at these, some of these things are, um, give my hand for a little bit of perspective there, some of these things are pretty big. These are way bigger than I had, uh, had anticipated them being, but I had to go that big in order to get the length. So, I think maybe I have over to this, because I had one of these on each one of those blocks. Now, I don't really think we need that. I think we probably get away with half of that and still have a very uh, stable structure there. I do have, I have more than enough of that, and I've got enough for... Um, some of the pieces are going to connect that. I'll, I'll show you when I actually start get to, uh, to build this. But I think I am done cutting these things for the day. One, I think I have enough. And two, it's coming up on noontime. I'm going to grab some lunch. It's supposed to get hot later today. It's already a little warm. And I got to go edit these videos and put a bunch of these out because uh, <laughs> I, uh, I have not posted the last several of this project. So I will get those out to you and hopefully go inside and cool off a little bit. Oh yeah, and until next time, y'all take care of each other, alright?